8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top Allumage Vulcain. Allumage des OAP. Et décollage. trajectoire est nominale. La propulsion est nominale. Five has just disappeared up into space. I mean, that was incredible, Vincent et Baptiste. La propulsion est nominale. The clear skies, the sounds of cameras clicking. And we still have an incredible, incredible image. Incredible image. That's really a bright night. So, Vincent, can you tell Le us now? We're intrigued to know it's disappearing up into space, but what are the next important stages of its journey? Yes, for the, for the time being, the, the launcher is still in its... Uh, initial conditions, that is to say, in still in, uh, in one piece, I, I would say. But in one minute, uh, approximately, the, the two solid uh, boosters will separate uh, from uh, the main stage that will occur at uh, precisely at two minutes and 20 seconds. Then, uh, one minute later, the, the fairing will be jettisoned. No nominal. more atmosphere. So no need to maintain the fairing uh, on the launcher. At eight minutes and 36 seconds, the Vulcan engine will be switched off. And the main uh, cryogenic stage will be separated six seconds later. So the engine of the upper cryogenic stage will be then ignited and will take the reins during more than 16 minutes in order to reach the targeted orbit. La propulsion est nominale, le pilotage est calme. And we have the image of yeah. the booster. We still have it. It's incredible. That's incredible. Separation des EAP. So you have that confirmation. Yes, we, we have the confirmation, yes, as you can see, that the, the two boosters have been successfully separated. So, Vincent, what I would like to ask you is, without these two boosters, the launcher is obviously now lighter than it was at takeoff. Can you tell us more about its weight now? Why does it need these boosters anymore? Uh, yes, so the, the launcher is liberated from any dead weight in order to maximize the, the, capability, the capabilities uh, of the different stages. So that's why, as soon as the solid propellant uh, located inside the booster has been fully consumed, uh, the two boosters are separated. So after this separation, uh, the, the mass of the launcher is only 170 tons to be compared to uh, 770 tons at the uh, lift of time. We still have an in incredible image. That's incredible. And now we're waiting for the next stage. Yes. Separation de la coiffe. Yes, we got confirmation that, the, as you can see on the, on the, on the video, uh, that the fairing has been uh, successfully jettisoned. So here we, we can see the, the spacecraft, yeah. Well, thank you, Vincent. We have five minutes before our next La milestone. So let's talk about Ariane 5's mission. We will come back to the different stages of this flight in a few moments. But before that, I would really like to talk about the specific geostationary orbit that we mentioned at the beginning of this program and towards which Ariane 5 is obviously now heading. First of all, what are the main orbits operated by Ariane Space? Well, uh, for observation and meteosat um, that need to pass over uh, an Earth region at the, at the same uh, local time every day, we use a SSO orbit, so a sun synchronous orbit. For the International Space Station and also particular satellite constellations that need to be relatively close nominal. to the Earth's surface, we use a low Earth orbit for which the proximity to Earth is uh, very uh, useful, I would say. The Telecomsat, as a connect VHTS, uh, need to stay const constantly above one particular place over Earth. So they have to be placed on a geo-orbit, uh, geostationary orbit. Ion 5 can inject such telecom orbit, uh, satellite, sorry, 
on a geo transfer orbit called GTO. So the satellites are not directly placed on their final orbit. They need to use their own energy. They can move uh, to the final uh, geo stationary orbit. Okay, and you explained to me before that um, it's a specific uh, flight tonight because the, the, the orbit targeted is special. Yes, tonight Ariane 5 uh, inject, will inject the Connect VHTS spacecraft on a GTO uh, orbit with a, an, uh, an apogee at 60,000 kilometers, which is a little bit unusual. So the strategy to consider such uh, an injection uh, with a very high apogee comes from a, a request from our customer and is made possible by uh, uh, the performance capabilities uh, Ariane 5 can offer for this single launch uh, mission. So we have customized the injection orbit uh, in order to satisfy as best as possible the, the request and demand from our customer. Okay, I'm sorry to insist. Why <laughs> is it a special demand, I guess, uh, you know? In fact, such uh, GTO injection enable, uh, enables our customer to reduce the quantity of propellant okay. uh, needed for the spacecraft to reach the final geo orbit after its separation from the launcher. So in other words, such injection is a more energetic orbit, uh, on a more energetic orbit, sorry, enables to reduce um, the propulsive cost for the spacecraft to reach its final operational orbit. The consequence is that the spacecraft will consume less propellant and its operational lifetime uh, will be then uh, extended. Okay. So what kind of satellites is this particular orbit suited to? Uh, such orbit is very interesting, typically for uh, electrical satellite as Connect VHTS. It enables the spacecraft operation engineer to optimize the post-launch sequence from the spacecraft separation uh, from, the, from the launcher up to the time when the spacecraft is positioned in its final orbit. Okay. Um, let's go back to live, uh, tonight's mission. Can you tell us about Ariane 5's present status? Yes, so uh, we are getting near the end of the main stage flight, so the flight sequence is running uh, perfectly as expected. Yes, the cutoff of the, main, of the main stage engine will occur in one minute and a half, approximately at eight minutes and uh, 36 seconds. And the launcher uh, is still tracked by the Galio Natal. ground station near Kourou. It will be uh, seen very soon by Natal, so we... Thank you. Yeah. We got the confirmation that uh, the launcher is now seen by the Natal ground station. Okay. Okay, well, I'd just like to say, um, going back into the um, Jupiter, we are with these very important VIPs today, Elva Bernacca, Dominique Dinin, Ross McInnes, and Hervé Dere. Uh, a bit of information here. Eva took the helm of UTELSA at the beginning of the year as Chief Executive Officer. Dominique what? heads the telecom. They're not just here on the screen yeah. yet, but uh, they're there. Apparently, they're there. But apparently we'll see they're them outside the Jupiter room. But watching, we'll, we'll, but see, we'll them. see them. We'll later. see them later. Definitely. There's Dominique, who heads the telecom operators board of directors, of which Ross is a member. Helvi heads Teles Alenia Space, and it's his teams who designed and built the satellite launch tonight, UTELSAT Connect VHTS. But and we'll, say, have we'll, pleasure, we'll have the pleasure. We'll have the pleasure to interview. Them, exactly. yeah, to interview later in the in the on road to space. Um, Let's go back to the flight tonight's flight. We are not waiting for another announcement really important by the DDO. Mm -hmm. And it's about the main core. Yes, so there will be a, a successive announcement by the DDO. So there will be um, the extension of the main stage, then its separation, and after the beginning of the upper stage uh, flight. Separation de l'EPC. OK. So we got confirmation that the PC is now, should, fin, the engine is, is, is cut off. and the main stage is uh, well separated, yes. Well separated. And we can see on, on those images uh, yes. and the behind us. Yes, and the upper stage is now ignited, yeah. Okay.